And let's get more reaction to Netflix's quarter and bring in Fast Money friend, uh, Loop Ventures founder, Gene Munster. Gene, great to have you with us. Um, and let's Hi, let's Melanie. let's set this discussion up with some context, and that is that you are neutral of Netflix. What are the major questions that you would have uh, for the Netflix management on that call? Well, really, how are they going to transform the business? Ultimately, companies that have these 90 multiple, that's what Netflix multiple is, 90 multiple greater, these massive uh, uh, multiple companies, Amazon, for example, in that camp, they need to transform. It's not just about growing subs domestically or growing subs internationally. And so my fundamental question for investors is how are they going to transform the streaming business? And everything that I understand is that they're going to be continuing to evolve around more localized content, international content that has been a strength of theirs. But to me, uh, that is a question for management team. And ultimately, there's not a lot of questions that I have for them. And the reason is pretty simple, is that the results tonight are an example of why this business is, A, difficult to predict. They do, as Karen said, typically under-promise and underperform. And in this case, they uh, did not hit that, uh, that, that uh, lower goal. But ultimately, the reason why they missed that goal is because growth simply isn't there. And th these markets that uh, you need to pay up for these multiples needs to have a transformative, a high growth uh, aspect to it. And I don't think there's anything on the call that they could tell me that would uh, change that longer term view. Ultimately, if the objective is to return to pre-pandemic growth levels mm -hmm. uh, sometime next year, to me, that isn't justification for uh, what should be uh, a great business, but not a great stock. When you say evolve the business, you want to know how they will evolve the streaming business. What, what exactly does that mean? Because it seems like right now a lot of media companies are trying to, tr to, to evolve into what Netflix is right now. When you take a look at Disney and, and the new emphasis on content and then Peacock as well. That's the challenge, is that essentially they're driving into what is a dead end here. And not to say, again, this is a great service. Consumers get a lot of value for their Netflix subscription. But again, I'm thinking about the stock and, and making money in the stock market. And ultimately, to do that, you have to evolve the business. So in the case of Netflix, there really isn't something to evolve to. And if you think about what Google is doing with some of their other bets, think about uh, Amazon, what they're doing uh, related to fulfillment. Think about Apple, what they're doing with AI and wellness uh, wearables. All these are transformative types of aspects on our life. And I think in the case of uh, Netflix, uh, I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's uh, some sort of uh, virtual reality type experience. I, I don't know where they go from this. But to me, the same playbook that they've used over the last 10 years, it's been great. It's a, this is almost a $250 billion company, much bigger than I ever thought it would be. But that same playbook, I don't think will yield the same results, that same price appreciation. Hey, Gene, I, so it's Tim. I'm skeptical uh, of some of the same issues that you have here, but the bulls are going to tell you uh, that the foundation of this uh, sub base uh, gives them the ability to flip the profitability switch at some point. I don't see it. Um, but where's the operational leverage in this business? And, and you know, what are your concerns around next year's content costs? Any thoughts into that? So I, I don't think that there is a, a ton of leverage in this business. We saw it in some of the previous quarters. Um, let's see, you mentioned it in the setup, too, as far as when they've been uh, cutting back some of the production costs in the pandemic. But that is not sustainable. They still have a relatively large amount of debt for a tech company. And yes, uh, they can have some margin improvements over time. But this is not, uh, I don't see this being a massive uh, margin expansion story for the simple reason is that content is king. And to do that, you have to keep producing content. You cannot pull back on that content spending. And so uh, I think uh, that is challenged. I think probably the most bullish uh, uh, part of this Netflix story is that, uh, that the logical investor would say that it's run its course, uh, that there's, uh, and I think the, uh, the esteemed panel today would, sounds like we're largely in agreement on this. And I think uh, the contrarian bull case, just the fact that it is uh, not uh, consensus, that's probably the most optimistic thing on the stock.
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.